Hello everybody, the doctor here on Ensign Ricky. We are about to hit a momentous event. We are about to hit level 60. As you can see, we are just a hair's breadth away from level 60. I'm in Argala doing a patrol. So I just wanted to cut in on this recording here and record this event as we cross over to level 60. And uh, then we'll go look at all the benefits from hitting level 60. Uh, again, this is Argala, just a normal, regular patrol. And uh, I've been doing a lot of these <laughs> to um, get to where I'm at on this character. It's been very grueling, <laughs> for sure. But I am almost there. Oh, so close now, so close. Oh, so close. Look at that. How awesome is this? This is gonna be sweet. Level 60, here we come. Finally. It has taken ages and ages and ages. Maybe we'll hit it on this round. Let's see. Almost. It's almost there. It's gonna happen. Any time now. Any second. Oh man. We are so close. If we don't get there after this one, I'm going to freak out. This should do it. This last group here. Come on, come on. This has got to be it. Ha, I don't want to do any more patrols today. I am so tired of patrols today. Wow, we didn't make it after all that, but maybe once I hit this and accept my reward, I'll get the skill points for this patrol. Here we go. This should be it, I think. Gosh, I hope. Yes, go away. I don't want you. Congratulations. Yes! There it is! We are level 60! Oh my gosh! It only took since, let's see, October, November, December, three months! <laughs> Holy crap. We're being held by Admiral Quinn. Greetings, Admiral. I have new orders for you. Promotion to Fleet Admiral. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Ensign Ricky. Your efforts have been invaluable to Starfleet, and you are a model of duty and bravery for your fellow officers. 
return to Earth's space dock. I would like to formally recognize your contributions to the Federation. Skill points, expertise, awesome. Let's get out of here and let's go do that promotion. We are officially level 60, everybody. A round of applause. Yay! Ensign Ricky is no longer an ensign. Or will he forever be an ensign, maybe? Can't believe it's finally happened. It has taken a very long time. That is for sure. Just to get from level 50 to 60 has taken more time than it has probably taken me to get from level 1 to level 50 before Delta Rising. Incredible. So our level 60 reward is we are now a Starfleet Fleet Admiral. We get a new trait slot. We have all our pips now. We are fully pipped up. And here we go, let's go to Admiral Quinn and become officially Fleet Admiral. Dun dun dun! You know what? I miss, I really miss that part of ESD, ESD you used to go to in the old ESD. You go into the ceremonial room and they would all salute you and you would actually turn in a little a little mission where they actually, it was like a part of the promotion as you go to that room and do that and they salute you. Kind of miss that. Made you feel like you were somebody. I'm uh, sad they took that part of the game out. Congratulations, you have reached the highest rank of Starfleet. I guess I outrank Quinn, is that how this works? Is this true? I mean, he's an admiral, right? So I outrank Quinn. I can order Quinn around. How do you like that? You have reached the highest rank of Starfleet. I am honored to serve at your side. You still have challenges ahead of you, but I am confident that you will be able to do anything you set out to do. Good luck. Gold members have earned a retraining token that you can use to change the distribution of your skill points. Visit Lieutenant Commander Ockrit in the lower level of Ops to retrain. Dun dun dun, one free costume change, skill respect, just a little bit of expertise there, and uh, specialization experience. Now that I'm level 60, you see the XP doesn't turn into XP, now it turns into those specialization points. So this is a, uh, a fact to remember and keep in mind, is you have the specializ this specialization tree, you want to keep skilling this up. This is important. This will help your character. This will make you better in space and ground, depending which one you slot as active or secondary, and what skills you use. And as I now progress beyond 60, those points turn in automatically to these specialization points. So that's why the bar still looks like it's going, even though I'm at the max level of 60 now. The bar will go all the way to the end again, and when I get to what would be 61, it'll, it'll come back around and then I'll get another specialization point. So you do keep leveling in that sense until you completely max out specializations, but as you can see, there's a ton of specializations. In fact, I've got two specialization points I'm going to use right now and completely max it out. My tier one of intelligence officer is now full, but look at this. I've got a whole tier two tree to go through and a tier three and a tier four tree, but not even that. I've got a whole commando. I've got trees there too, and then pilot. So there's a lot of expanding yet to do. So even though I'm max level 60, I can still progress my character and gain new skills beneficial on ground and space as long as I just keep playing the game and earning, basically earning what would be skill points now turn into these specialization points automatically. You don't have to do anything, it's just all automatic. So don't forget that specialization stuff is there. It is very useful. This stuff in this tree, um, like these, um, the defenses for, uh, uh, my ship in space. I notice these working all the time. So these things are real. They make a difference. And in fact, people that I've seen people that have had their commando skills maxed out, and they are a beast on ground. 
their their things proc all the time and they are a real benefit to the team and themselves uh, you can be a beast on ground with all commando maxed out you can be a beast in an escort with all pilot mix maxed out from what I've seen very useful uh, I started with intelligence officer I got tier one I'm probably will move into another tier one field probably commando since this is an engineering character I want to see what the commando does on ground but some good stuff and specialization so don't miss out on that stuff okay we are 60 awesome we are as far as we can go oh yeah we got a new uh, trait so we should be able to go here look at this we got a brand new personal trait slot open to us that means we can put in any uh, ground or space trait that we want here now. Now we have, uh, at least on, the, on my character, because he's Liberated Borg, each character has a different amount of traits, keep in mind. Mine's a Liberated Borg. I have three, six, nine total now that I'm 60, so I've got nine total traits. Very, very nice to have that. But level 60 gets you that extra trait, so I have that. I'll, uh, I'll look through here and see what I'm going to add. I like to mix it up. I have like half ground, half space. Uh, I'm going to want to look through my powers that I currently have and see what would be appropriate to add here. I'll do that off camera because I want to spend a little time reading it and uh, seeing what trait might benefit me best. But I'll come back on the next video and show you what trait I did choose. Uh, again, I got my specializations done. This one was ground, by the way. The ones I just added, this was Flank Refraction 2 and Flank Refraction 3. These are these are ground abilities here. This is um, attackers that flank you have a chance to be placated. So this is a ground ability on this tier of the Intelligence Officer Specialization. Again, it works really good. This stuff is... You don't want to miss these specialization points. Uh, make sure you use them and make sure you do your traits. Very important as well. Your, your reputation traits and your personal traits. All very, very important. One more thing just to update you. My um, Delta Alliance reputation. I'm almost tier 5 on this character. Um, I mean, excuse me, almost tier 4 which means I can work on the tier 5 progression. So I don't have it maxed yet. I've got another character that's much farther in. He's maybe a week away from having tier uh, 5 be unlocked, maybe a little less. So once I get maxed out in the Delta Reputation, I will make a video going over everything you can get in the Delta Reputation, in the stores, everything you can purchase, ground and space, I'll go over the powers, we'll do a whole Delta Alliance Reputation video, but I want to wait till I, you know, get to uh, Tier 5 unlocked and all that first. Um, this character is a little ways off, so once I get that other character done, I will use a token, one of those sponsorship tokens on Ensign Ricky to get him leveled through Tier 5 faster. Uh, but we'll do that. That'll come a little bit later. Um, so that's where I'm working on there. Man, we are we are we are level 60. I mean, we're at the max. What else? What else can you do? I mean, just keep working on those specialization points. Really. I want to go to the tailor here. I think we should be able to um, put on our proper rank now. Let's get the proper rankage going here. We are now Fleet Admiral. There we go. There they are. Fleet Admiral pips. There we go. We are showing off that we are fully maxed out. How awesome is that? Very cool. Let's go up to space because now we're level 60 and we had a tier 5 U ship. We can see what the maximum stats are on our ship now that we are level 60. Remember it had an auto leveling hull during all that time. And now we're level 60, it will show the, um, the, the max hull that we have. I'll let all the power numbers settle to um, where they need to go. And remember I already have the um, the mastery has already been unlocked, complete all, all four mastery unlocks have already been unlocked on this ship for a long time, so nothing new there. But here's our final stats we're ending up with, 87,823 hull. 
So almost 90,000 hull, and this is a Galaxy X, or the Dreadnought Cruiser, Tier 5U. I do have a few things buffing the hull, so it would be less if you didn't have some of the things I have. For example, I have the uh, this console engineering enhanced neutronium alloy with uh, Starship Structural Integrity that improves ship hit points, so that's improving the hull. I have a deflector that's improving ship hit points by plus 35. I have, um, I probably have a trait doing that as well. Something in here probably is doing that. That's power levels. That's whole healing, not whole strength. You know what? I guess I don't have one doing, uh, I don't have one doing anything for the whole. I have whole healing, but I don't have whole, uh, hit points or any trait for that, so I guess I don't have a trait doing it. It's just basically my gear boosting it. But if I had a trait that did that, that could help even more. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There are other other traits I forgot. Uh, here we go. Um, e this one right here. Yeah, fortified hole. I do have a space trait. I guess this one is... I forgot which one this is from. Is this, um, I forgot what reputation that's from. But it is called Fortified Hull, and it is uh, plus 7.5% hull. So that is adding hull as well. So I do have one, one space trait from a reputation. Some rep reputation, I forgot which one it was. So those things are buffing my hull, but um, that's where we are. I like that the hull strength is pretty high on this thing. My shield strength is not as high as I would want it. But I have consoles taking up space where like a shield uh, capacity thing could go. Because I'm using all of the uh, Dreadnought Cruiser's abilities. I've got all of the things on here. Pretty much I got it filled up as much as I can. The only thing now to further on this ship, of course, would be to upgrade everything to Mark 13 and 14. My weapons are all Mark 12. Remember, I've been doing this whole leveling from 50 to 60 with Mark 12 weaponry. And that's what I want you all to notice and, and keep in mind, is it is possible to do all the new stuff in Delta Rising with Mark 12 gear. You don't need 13 or 14 gear to do it. You, even for the advanced STFs, I've only been, this is the gear I've been using, all Mark 12, and I've been very successful um, at doing them. Because it's all about tactics, knowing what you're doing, uh, making sure your skills are, and, and bridge officer powers are set right and all that. You can get away with Mark 12. You really don't need Mark 13 or 14. Of course, it would help. Sure. But it's not necessary, and I think I've proven that. And that's, a, that's a big point I want to get across because some people have been, say, have been saying, Oh, I'm weak. I'm not doing good in the advanced SCFs. I need to upgrade to Mark 13 and 14 gear. I say, no, you don't. I say that you can get away with Mark 12 gear as long as you know what you're doing. Tactics, know how to play the STFs, be good at them, I mean be a good team player. Notice your environment. A lot of people miss this in STFs but they only focus on what they are doing and they don't look at what the other team members are doing. If you look at what another team member is doing in an STF, you can adjust what you're doing to help pass the mission. For example, if you see a team member, um, you know, um, attacking, being the only one who's attacking the nanite generator or whatever, when the things are down and it's ready to do it, then you need to stop what you're doing and go help him maybe. Or maybe there's a guy having a lot of trouble doing something. Maybe he's, he's having trouble doing probes or whatever, and you see that, then you can go run over to his aid and help him things like that. If you are aware of what other people are doing, you can adjust what you're doing to help the mission and help everybody. And uh, a lot of people just get focused only on what they're doing and don't recognize what's going on in the entire mission. And that can fail STFs a lot if you don't recognize that. Um, I can go into more depth about that, more examples later on uh, sometime. I need to go through do all the STFs and uh, maybe uh, do a better job explaining how to do them. Um, we can talk about that later, but the point is, Mark 12, I've been doing just fine with that gear. 
And uh, but now that I am level 60, I I would like to upgrade to 13 and 14 gear. It is very expensive to do so. This is a problem. I wish they would have updated the fleet gear in uh, the uh, fleet uh, in your fleet star base and fleet spire and all that to now give out 13 and 14 gear because that used to be the highest level gear is from those fleet star bases used to be mark 12 very rare that was the highest gear you could get so i think they need to now upgrade those fleet star bases and everything to give out mark 14 very rare gear i think that's the way it should be and then you can go back and spend all your resources and getting um, your stuff through the fleet star base just like you did before and you would have all the highest level gear I think they need to do that that's my opinion I don't know if they will but I think they need to I, I believe that giving out mark 12 very rare gear in the fleet stuff just doesn't apply anymore it doesn't make sense because if you try to upgrade this stuff it's very expensive to upgrade from mark 13 to mark 14 very expensive to upgrade this stuff takes a lot of dilithium takes a lot of materials all kinds of stuff and um, I would like to have mark 14 gear but it's just too expensive for me right now to do it and I'm sure for a lot of people anyway got a little bit off topic there but uh, <laughs> I am so happy that I'm 60 now that means we can finally do the last mission of Star Trek Online's Delta Rising called what's left behind so um, expect that as the next video we will uh, do that well I'm here I'm level 60 I made it <laughs> I finally made it and boy am I relieved thank you all for watching stay tuned for the next one we're gonna do what's left behind next then we will summarize this whole Delta Rising experience <laughs> because it has definitely been an experience for sure. <laughs> well, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.